Snowstorm. It is going to be Zuna on Leoric, Soldier on Muradin, Arthalon on Sonya, Kale on Bala, and Dreadnought on Uther. And their opponents on the right hand side of the map in the red, Cloud9 with Dunk Train on Malfurion, King Caffeine, of course, on Johanna, Fan on Abathur, K1 Pro on Jaina, and I Dream on Butcher. The gates are now opening. We're going to see exactly where they uh, will rotate to. Pretty common for them to actually move here as a group for a little bit. There, it looks like they're going to be staying in here for a little bit now, mm -hmm. and they're actually blocking uh, their own minions to slow down that wave. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this is something that we've been seeing more and more uh, commonly recently. You slow these minions down a little bit so that the minion wave will meet closer to your wall. Makes you a little bit safer in a way. But it looks like immediately Tempo Storm will clean it up. And now we have a rotation of three down here at the bottom here for Cloud9. Uh, and one at the top, uh, Abathur now hiding right now. It, it looks like it should be now a rotation of Tempo Storm coming down here to the bottom trying to chase back Cloud9. All right, well. Uh, it looks like it is slowing down a little bit here. We'll have to see exactly where these guys want to go as far as lanes go. Right now, the middle controlled by Tempo Storm. In the early game, they generally have to control that area and can roam very easily. Over the top, it looks like we're going to have Sonya and the Butcher landing over there. Right now, uh, the Butcher and Abathur comboing now. Abathur hat there trying to drive Sonya back. Well, you know, Sonya, definitely a good solo laner, can go against just about anyone, but again, Butcher, very tough to sustain against. He can just drain her health so quickly, and it looks like it's time for the Shrines to activate. So the Shrines are now up. Again, if they control both of those, then they can become the Dragon Knight in the center, as long as you can secure that for enough time. Uh, it's not so common to have uh, the Dragon Knight taken right away unless somebody makes a major mistake. A lot more of the early game here is really about soaking up experience in the lanes. Uh, that is certainly the case. Now, right now, we do see Tempo Storm attacking this bottom tower. Uh, we do have King Caffeine trying to push him back with that Abathur hat. Important to note here is that even though both shrines are under uh, control right now for Cloud9, it's very difficult to get in there um, and actually take that because Tempo Storm is, has three in the middle here. Yeah. That's one of the burdens here that we have to face. Yeah, it's really cool to see like that. And don't forget, Abathur is not like a solid body on the field. His hat can jump all over the place very quickly but he's not another body to just grab a shrine with, generally speaking. So uh, it could be hard for Cloud9 to actually secure both shrines and grab the center Dragon Knight. And now bottom shrine is going to the control here of Tempo Star. Meanwhile, up here at the top center, uh, we see an engage right now. He's trying to run back, and he does manage to get back safely over to the turret area where you don't want to over-engage just there. Some nice body blocking there, though, by Muradin. Sonya dealing lots of damage as well. Some good, solid rotations coming out of Tempo Storm so far to try to control these lanes. Down here, rather over here in the mid, uh, we see another engagement right now and a beautiful takedown there. Uther out of the game for the time being, but the Butcher though, maybe a little bit too far back, trying to run back right now, getting a stun, and it looks like the Butcher does go down. They're trying to run away, and Johanna goes behind the gate. It looks like that's going to be that. A little bit of an exchange there. Indeed, some really nice moves going down by both sides. These guys are really having a lot of scuffles here in the early game. Now we're going to have to watch and uh, see where will these shrines go. It looks like Tempo Storm is going to control both momentarily, and, and they have control they of the center. They actually might be able to get the, the, the dragon right now. It looks like, uh, oh, nice job there by Abathur, just trying to delay that. And another, oh, no, he's going to get it anyway. He actually <laughs> manages to get over there and just come in time. now. Beautiful play as the Dragon Knight now pushes forward into the mid lane. Yeah, Tempo Storm really on top of things here, taking advantage of that extra body, grabbing both those shrines, and getting a very early dragon considering the team that they're against. Yeah, very impressive play there. Uh, Tempo Storm, though, already, you know, really beginning to pick that lead up, and this is indicative of what we've seen here from Tempo Storm previously. Well, right now we do have that level 7 being reached by Tempo Storm. They still have the Dragon Knight up for another 20 plus seconds. In the meantime, three of Tempo Storm up at the top trying to push. But Cloud9 holding on, not taking too much damage yet. I like the rotating the Dragon down here at the bottom. You know, a lesser team would obviously just run in there and lose the Dragon so quickly, but not Tempo Storm. They're just too good. Now doing damage down at the bottom. The wall in the uh, mid lane here has actually been torn open, making that fort pretty vulnerable. That's right, but for the time being, it looks like the Dragon Knight is gone and the game will slow down for a little bit. Tempo Storm continuing to push around a bit, and in fact, uh, towards the top, we do have Sonya and Murden kind of lurking around near their opponent's side. And so, you know, the 
phase where the dragon has been in the game is basically gone. We're going to come back now to the shrines in just a little bit here. Uh, over at the top right now, we have once again the Butcher fighting off with Sonya. Murden now coming in here. Nice dodge there by the Butcher as the Butcher now comes back. Good escape there from Murden. All right, well, the Butcher continuing to hold his own in that lane for the time being. Plenty of fresh meat on that guy. Uh, but we do see that those that bottom uh, siege camp was taken. So we're going to have a nice push by Tempo Storm in this mid bottom lane. But Cloud9 getting their own siege ogres as well. Yeah, the Merc camp over here in the upper left is being captured as well. As we're going to have some solid pushing coming through here. Catching the tail end of that just there. And it's going to be up to uh, Cloud9 to try to figure out how to come back from this. The scary thing is that Tempo Storm's almost to level 10. And when they're yeah. at level 10, I mean, there's just no way that Cloud9 can really engage. And that means Tempo Storm can really bully Cloud9 uh, back behind their base. Yeah, that's a very good point. And if those shrines are up during that time, it's going to be very hard for them to actually hold on to any. So we're going to have to see some really crisp rotations coming out of Cloud9 to be able to deny that Dragonite. But for the time being, Tempo Storm pushing forward with their Knights. We do have King Caffeine coming out, doing a lot of damage here to the Mercs. And the Butcher trying to help out as well. As you can see, the wall is close to coming down here now. Not much they can do, though. Again, level 10 to level 9, you have that heroic ability. It's just too difficult to actually get in there and do the damage. Uh, and it looks like the fort at high risk of going down. In fact, they're going to go ahead and press beyond that. A nice stun there. Oh. As we see Johanna retreating, running right now. We are ghosting in, but then ghosting back. And this fort will 100% go down. Yeah, it does look like it. We do have the Butcher kind of coming out and poking once again. But Tempo Storm has pushed their opponents back. And as they do finish off this fort, they should be able to grab that top shrine as well. Yeah, this is going to be very, very nice. They actually are going to have the opportunity uh, pretty soon here to just go down and try to take that bot shrine. Uh, mercenary camps remaining right now, the upper right and bruiser camp, as well as the bottom <laughs> mercenary camp. So they may be trying to rotate back to that in a little bit here. Well, look at this. All these mines slowing down the rotations of Tempo Storm almost to a comedic effect right there. <laughs> really good play by the Avatar player here on Cloud9. Yeah, he's doing a great job. Uh, and it looks like, once again, they're going to be pushing over the bridge. You've got to be careful on the bridge because, um, you know, area effect damage spells can just deal so much damage there. But they are going to try to, and this is pretty gutsy, try to come in here and take this bruiser camp. And then yeah. the response here from Cloud9 is to push in and actually reclaim that area and take the bruisers further out. All right, well, it does look right now. Right now, we do have a Butcher clone going after Lior for the time being. A really cool idea here. And uh, going to deal a lot of damage, push him back while Cloud9 regains this ground on their side of the map. It's going to be a tough spot here for Cloud9. We do see the top shrine being captured, but the, as we say that, at the same time, Tempo Storm actually captures bottom shrine, so it's still divided for the time being. No one can get the Dragon back. Well, right now, uh, it looks like the bottom mercs are being taken out by Sonya and Uther. Tempo Storm is doing some great rotating right now, being able to come down, you know, grabbing more merc camps than their opponents, getting the pressure on those lanes, and hopefully for them, getting another Dragon Knight. And now here we see Cloud9 still just on the defense. And I, and I got to appreciate that because I think if they pushed out too far, they would end up getting smashed here. At the top lane, we still see Leoric and uh, I believe the Butcher just uh, going back and forth. Now Leoric's actually going to be able to rotate up a little bit further and try to take that shrine. Let's see if the Butcher can try to come in here and deny it. <laughs> He's going after Leoric right now, putting a lot of damage on him. Now, of course, uh, oh, especially that Avatar hat, the Butcher will absolutely destroy Leoric, but some nice fancy micro there with Wraithwalk from Zuna to try to deny. Looks like both, uh, no, excuse me, once again, a trade here in the shrines. Uh, although there's been more of a skirmish over there at the top. Looks like uh, Butcher May, no, he's not going to reclaim that top shrine. Meanwhile, down here at the bottom lane, continue to be pushed forward down by Jaina. Over here in the, in the center of the Butcher, under a lot of pressure right now. It's New York, it's Van Martin all the way. Nice takedown there. Some beautiful stuns, really abusing the Butcher where he's weak, unable to latch on and take health off of his opponent. So a great pickoff by Tempo Storm. In the meantime, chasing back King Caffeine. Stunning on mouth right there, but we do have uh, King Caffeine turning around and peeling them off. Yeah, nicely done. Uh, we are going to see it. Looks like Uther possibly go down here to the bottom, try to take that shrine. But meanwhile, uh, up here, Leoric has to do a good job of denying any access over here to the top. But look, some sneakery is going on up here at the very top. Because they're actually going to be able to get this shrine back here with Abbott there going and taking the top. Oh, oh that's right. And he gets out of so there sad. just in time. A beautiful move there. <laughs>
Wow, I am really, loving it. Really impressive stuff. I mean, that is so risky and so much is on the line here. Crazy stuff. All right, well, we do have the Butcher rushing in right now on ball. Does have to back up, taking a lot of damage at the moment and does go down before Mouse Tranquility can do anything. And it looks like TS Strat's going to be able to take the Dragon Knight now and another push. Uh, gonna come through here and it looks like, oh, no way to escape there as the Butcher goes down. Yeah, that's right, and it looks like both the Butchers are gone from this battle, so we only have three heroes really in it at the moment. The Dragonite pressing into that center area. A little bit of spreading going on. Looks like uh, Abathur once again maybe getting a little bit cheeky up there, <laughs> trying to get some experience. Abathur is going to be very careful because obviously the moment that you're spotted, you're, you're basically dead. I'm even surprised that Abathur managed to Hearthstone out of there. Uh, back there in the center, we see the Dragonite continue to push and a rotation down here to the bottom for Tempo Storm uh, as they're doing a fantastic mm. job of really keeping the pressure on. It looks like they might be able to actually tear down this fort. Yeah. No, in fact, they're going to be pushed back a little bit, but again, very bruised fork to be taken out uh, later on at any time. Yeah, well, in the meantime, you know, the Dragonite keeping Jaina busy there in the middle. And, oh! <laughs> Barely caught that one. Leora catching Abathur out and going for the punish. Well, this is pretty convenient right now for Tempo Storm. They're going to be able to take the top shrine uh, again pretty quickly. Um, as the Dragonite now expires and we're not too far away from the shrines, then, um, you know, resetting. Yeah, it looks like right now they're about to hit level 16, and there it is up a talent tier against Cloud9, who's only level 13 right now, giving a huge advantage to Tempo Storm. Now rotating down here, looks like they may be trying to take out uh, the, uh, the uh, Siege Giants, excuse me, on enemy turf right now, denying Cloud9, who's already in a pretty defensive position from utilizing the mercenary camps in close proximity to them. A great play there by Tempo Storm. Yeah, they're really utilizing this, this big lead that they just gained. It's fantastic play by Tempo Storm, really showing, you know, we're always talking about how in the late game they are so, so strong, and you can see right here why that is. Now rotating up here to the top, just going to make sure that these bruisers can push in that upper lane as much as possible. We don't normally see invasions to the opposing base from the bridge, from the top lane, because it's so hard to get in there. Uh, and that's why they're now focusing down here into the middle lane. Well, right now we do have them attacking into this center lane, trying to take down these towers, gaining that huge amount of extra experience. Nice pull in there by King Caffeine, trying to fend them off, but they will lose that entire wall. Nice job, and never overextending here is Tempo Storm. You can see why these guys have nearly a flawless record now coming down here um, and just gonna go ahead and push in this lane as well I believe we'll probably see the bottom mercenary camp captured here yeah it does look like Murden already going down Dreadnought team captain and support coming down to help out as well if they can get some of these mercenary camps in fact it looks like they're going for all of them that's yeah. gonna put a ton of pressure no, on the cloud nine I think that's great what they're doing is they're pushing the lanes they're doing as much damage um, whether it's destroying the fort or just doing the damage to the wall outside the keep once they sense that they can't do any more, they go back, they take care of all the map objectives, cleaning up all these mercenary camps, as that's going to keep all those lanes pushed in so easily. Guys, look at the mini-map in the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Everything turning blue, every mercenary camp belongs to Tempo Storm, and now the Dragon Shrines are up. And as we can see here, Again, Cloud9, I think this is the moment they might be able to push out. We're getting late enough in the game where the death timer's long enough. If they do get a good team fight and actually succeed there, maybe they can pull something off and start to push back um, you know, their position, their opponent's position on the map. Well, right now we do have a team fight going down. It looks like that one butcher from Abathur is going to uh, expire. And they are going to back off for the time being, so Tempo Storm controlling you know, the spawn shrine. They have I the just, top shrine, and Sonya's just, going to the center. Yeah, there's just no way that they're going to be able to stop this. They are too good <laughs> on this map. And there is the Dragon Knight again. By the way, at the top, uh, you know, there's still mercenaries pushing up into that lane that that has to be uh, taken care of. Just the tail end of it, though, as we see now, the Dragon Knight is still continuing to try to crush forward here uh, in the center lane. Well, Dragonite coming in for a drop kick on the Butcher. Get out of here, he says. It looks like Tempo Storm pushing forward. They want to take down their first keep of the game. But we do have Dream coming back, putting a lot of damage onto that Dragonite. King Caffeine walking through as well. And it does look like this keep is going to go down. Nicely done. Now, will they rotate out around and then go to the bottom? I believe that's what they have in store for us here. Butcher now coming in here trying to engage. Well, it looks like uh, Tempo Storm going to be able to get out of here just in the nick of time. Arthalon, though, could be in some trouble. Getting a little bit low on that Dragonite, but no, his team rotates down, helping him out. And it looks like they want to kill another wall. 
And I think this is fantastic. If they take, they already take it out mid keep, right? If they take out the bottom um, keep, there's so much open area where they can go in and push that core. Oh, well, uh, you know, that is that is a pretty big deal. But having even one keep down means if we see a team wipe, the game may end. So we're going to have to see Cloud9 play very defensively, very carefully here, and hopefully take uh, uh, some small victories before level 20 is reached by Tempo Storm, because when those Storm talents are up, things are going to get even worse. I just don't know how on earth Cloud9 to come back from this. I guess all they can really do, if, for instance, here, try to take this Mercenary camp, but more importantly, try to stay back and, and bait Tempo Storm into overextending. If they overextend, then you can then you could possibly do a huge punishment because at level 19, um, that's when you can really uh, knock them out of the game for a long time, right? And then they can try to push back in. The only other problem though is that Temple Storm really never lost any bit of their infrastructure. That's yeah. a, that's a lot of defense to chew your way through if you're <laughs> Cloud9. Oh, definitely a fact right there, Tasis. Even if Cloud9 were to team wipe Tempo Storm right now, they wouldn't be able to finish the game. It's just there's so much to get through. Some towers, the forts, the keeps. Uh, it's it's pretty crazy how well Tempo Storm has played this game. And now they're level 20. They have those very important Storm talents. And this is just getting harder and harder and harder for Cloud9. You know, the distance between level 18 to level 20 to level up there, it, it's a little while right now. So Tempo Storm is sitting very comfortably here. A Continue to just uh, suck up all the map objectives possible and uh, keep the pressure here on Cloud9. Cloud9 just staying in the back, which I think is exactly what they need to do. Don't go out too far. You're going to be in a lot of trouble. Also note that the Shrines are going to activate in about 20 seconds here. And with the lanes this pushed in, it's pretty much impossible for Cloud9 to do, to prevent the Dragonite from actually being taken. Well, right now they did attack that keep. Was that an overcommittal? It doesn't look like it. Cloud9 not really able to do too much. They do force them off for the time being, but no real damage done to Tempo Storm here. Yeah, Tempo Storm smartly backing up, saying to themselves they will have an easier opportunity when both shrines have been acquired. I will say Cloud9, by the way, did a good job keeping the uh, top lane pushed out here. Uh, and we see already the top shrine being captured there. Uh, and this is a bit of a delay. You know, it's so risky to do that with Abathur, but I, I like it. I mean, if yeah. they make it work, then they can keep the rest of the four-man team down there, uh, continuing to defend. Yeah, indeed. You know, Fan is really on top of his Abathur play here today. He's seeing where Tempo Storm is at and utilizing the global yeah. presence of Abathur every single time he can. It's fantastic. What, what's so cool about it, too, is that Abathur is most of the time, you know, especially at this phase of the game, tucked away somewhere in the base, right? Yeah. In, in your own base. So occasionally, yeah, you can sneak out and nobody's looking for him then, right? So that's a great way yeah. to take that shrine. Well, right now, more mercenary camps being captured. Leoric takes that top shrine as well. Temple Storm continuing to do some strong rotations here. As they do walk down, four of them together. Leoric is alone up on the top, though. Ban <laughs> once again, man. <laughs> He is unstoppable. Pretty that crazy. We made that happen twice there. <laughs> so close. I mean, if he just gets hit once, that's it. He's gone. But really impressive play there. Now, both shrines have been captured, but Tempo Storm is in the middle of the map. And it takes a little bit to actually try to get the Dragonite. So all you do is poke him like we just saw there from Johanna. All right. Well, looks oh. like Sonya trying to get it. And King Caffeine with the save right there. But will be enough to Butcher being taken out in a matter of seconds. Valfurian being targeted down quite a bit. K1 Pro actually going to the south. But they are going after Duck Train. And now it's three heroes to two. Now you see we're treating back here. Oh, but hold that thought. At the very top, they're going to try to take the Shrine at the very top. Is it going to be able to deny the Dragon Knight? Oh, well, it oh, looks like the yes, yeah, Just barely, however, <laughs> is the core protected, I guess, is the other question we got to ask ourselves here. Indeed, and Jaina being taken out in a matter of seconds. King Caffeine is back. He denied the Dragonite, but can he deny his team's defeat? It is not looking like it. Tempo Storm just turning down this core. It doesn't look like there's enough damage to stop him. And it looks like game number one is going to go to 